is real detrimental to the whole YSL trial, bro. Now, this is crazy. And it's one of the longest standing trials in Atlanta history, bro. For those that don't know. Now, this nigga Pee Wee, man, that, you know what I mean? Blaze W. Wayne tour bus. You understand what I'm saying? This super cop said he was present. He was there. That he rolled past him and all this, bro. He know names, social security numbers. He know people mama names. You know what I mean? He claimed to have grewed up with certain people. Like, you know what I mean? And he also is testifying that Pee Wee paid him $200. That basically, you know what I mean? So he did this to himself. You know what I'm saying? But what's so detrimental to the whole case is the simple fact that we gonna see how close the judge is with this prosecutor, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, man, the judge is acting like he favoring Young Thug, and in real life, he gonna railroad him. That's what y'all don't feel. It's 700 and something witnesses, bro. You know what I'm saying? And then nigga here is one of the most detrimental ones. Man, I want y'all to listen to what he got to say and listen to what he talking about. Follow this thing through, man. And under and after you done listening to him talk, you will understand what type of situation Young Thug is even in, bro. You know what I'm saying? This nigga know people, mamas in the whole camp, bro. Like, real talk, man. Y'all listen to this, man. This is some of the wildest things you're going to hear, man. I'm out. Chris Bennett was a member of Bird Gang. And Chris Bennett was also Donovan Thomas's cousin. And he basically was kidnapped, uh, subsequently tortured and shot and killed. And they found his body in DeKalb County in 2010. By Chris's death, Bird Gang then added his initials to their moniker. Instead of just being BG for Bird Gang, they became BGCMB, which stands for Chris Markel Bennett, was added to the, the moniker of their gang. What was it again, the moniker? Bird Gang, BG. Uh -huh. Is the acronym they added CMB, which is Chris Markel Bennett, which was his initials to the gang. Smunk. So it's CMB, BG. BG CMB would be the letters used. And that's Bird Gang that eventually became. A so it's correct. So you have If Gang, ABG, Bird Gang, Haiti Gang, all became if gang three gangs walmart took over three mom and pop stores got it okay um you said that you interviewed people in this courtroom do you know who they are i sure do can you identify who you're talking about you have shannon steelwell interviewed him once he was shot in the tiara jones case I'm in the right behind you diamante kendricks interviewed him when he was arrested with martinez arnold after they attempted to retaliate and do a drive-by after Martinez Arnold was stumped out in Magic City in October of 2015. Who else is over there? I can't see anybody. Um, were, you, were you involved um, as an expert or as an investigator in the Cobb County investigation? I sure yeah. was. I was at the club that night when everything transpired. And when it transpired... I've known Mr. Winfrey since he was probably 10 years old. I think my first extra job was a TI video shoot, and Mr. Winfrey used to walk on his tippy toes, bouncing around. And the night of the Lil Wayne bus shooting, he actually came and gave me a hug. And because, how you doing? You good to see you, all right? Yeah. And then as things, the night transpired while pulling traffic, and once things started to break out, I also saw Walter Murphy, who I didn't know at the time, take a gun out of his waistband and put it on the tires of Mr. Williams' sister, Green Explorer. And when he put the gun on the tire, I took another individual and pushed him into Mr. Murphy, and Mr. Murphy took off running. Mr. Williams' sister basically said, why the hell is the police pointing a gun at me? Because, and I showed her the gun that was in my possession. And then everyone started scattering. I then saw Quindarius Zachary, or sick D, mm -hmm. and I said, Mr. Zachary, you might want to go home. And he said, you don't know me. I said, the, the last four of your social is this, your date of birth is this, your mother is this. Do you want me to keep going? He said, I'm gone. Then as we started pulling traffic, another officer told me to stop traffic so the white Camaro stopped the white Camaro. I wasn't jumping in front of a car. He hit the gas. 
as the car took off, we started getting reports from the security inside the club that stayed behind that the bus is being shot on 285. We were concerned with the two officers that escorted the bus on motorcycles. As we began to call them, they pulled back up at the location. At the, at the time that you got out of the way, I guess, or let the... Got out the way for my own safety, yes. Got out the way of the white Camaro. Uh -huh. Were you able to see who was in the white Camaro? It was Jimmy Winfrey. Okay. Just Jimmy Winfrey? That I saw. And another officer indicated that he had a stick on the seat. A stick is slang for an assault rifle. All right. Who was who that officer? Uh, officer Finney. And we're, um, I understand that you were a fact witness in that case. Mm -hmm. I, I guess my question is, were you also involved in the Cobb County charging decisions in that case? I was not. Cobb County, we knew that Cobb County didn't know what was going on. Once again, it goes back to if it was... If we didn't get involved in this case, Cobb County thinks it's just a bus being shot up, not knowing that the players involved are involved in this other investigation that's going on. Uh, what happened is, after we got off the next morning, I watched TMZ like everybody else, and they said a white Corvette pulled up on the side of the bus and shot up the bus. And I said, wait a minute, a Corvette and a Camaro looks very similar. What Mr. Winfrey didn't know is... I have an undercover page. I basically follow him on my page. I went and looked on his page, and he just got a brand-new Z28 Camaro. I screenshotted it. I reached out to the Zone 2 commander and said, who's working the bus shooting? Because I thought it was on us. He said, well, it's on Cobb County. Put me in touch with the detective, Detective Racy. And that's how the relationship was formed. Okay, but... So once that relationship was formed, did you work alongside Detective Racine? Oh, most definitely. It, it's Racine, right? Racy. Racy. Okay. I know how it's spelled. I just don't know how it's Racine spelled. is in Wisconsin. <laughs> All right. So. So once you were involved with Detective Racy, were you involved in the charging decisions at that point? No, we didn't. There are different jurisdictions. Okay. We can't dictate to them what to charge. All we did is assisted in identifying. I only knew Mr. Winfrey as Pee Wee or Roscoe. I didn't know his government name. And so when we got to work, my partner uh, basically dug until she found his government name. And once she found his government name, we then re found out that he was on probation, reached out to his probation officer. And she said, I'll call him in right now. And we met at the probation office when Mr. Winfrey showed up. And when Mr. Winfrey showed up and he looked and saw us in a, we were in a rental car, a Chrysler 300. He looked and he said, oh, can I curse? Yes. <laughs> he said, oh, fuck. Because he saw me and he knew that I was there and he knew that he, I knew what happened. And he immediately went in his pocket and took out $200 and slapped fives with me. And I looked at my hand and I said, what's this? I don't get down like that. And he said, man, I know I was tripping the other night. And at that point, I knew that he was going to jail because he just pretty much told on himself. And if you ever find my file, it's a file with $200 in an envelope in the back of it.